Dr. Teresa Lyons here, creator of Navigating Autism and Eat to Heal Autism. And this week's Ask Dr. Lyons question pertains to comorbidities, specifically metabolic disorders, and the one we're going to look at today is tetrahydrobiopterin. Yes, we're looking at BH4 dysfunction in autism. So if your child has low neurotransmitter issues, so things like low muscle tone, difficulty swallowing, loss of coordination, those are all indicators of low neurotransmitter levels. This video, you're definitely gonna watch. So let's get to the science. Understanding your child's comorbidities that go along with their autism is an important step in optimal outcomes. So today we will deep dive into one of them. Autism comorbidities. Comorbidity is defined as the simultaneous presence of two chronic diseases or conditions in a patient. And treatments of these comorbidities are well known. Therefore, there's no reason for your child to suffer with certain comorbidities. It's really something to focus on when you're healing autism. You're healing autism and all the related symptoms and other comorbidities. Here's a list of comorbidities, seizure and epilepsy, neurotransmitter disorders, sleep disorders, metabolic disorders, and today we're going to do a deep dive into tetrahydrobiopterin, immune disorders, and gastrointestinal disorders. So let's get into tetrahydrobiopterin. Here's what tetrahydrobiopterin looks like. And I will say it is commonly abbreviated BH4 because when you're talking, it's a mouthful at times. What does it do? It is involved in the breakdown of phenylalanine, which then can be further involved in tyrosine as well as dopamine, a neurotransmitter. BH4 is also involved in the production of monoamine neurotransmitters, the production of nitric oxide, and it's a necessary hydrogen providing cofactor for tryptophan to become 5-HTP, which then becomes serotonin. And two steps from that, you can have melatonin. So you can see how if you have a child who, let's say, is having sleep issues, yes, it could be related to melatonin. But in order for melatonin to be created, many other steps have to be occurring before then. So it's really important that when we start looking at the body, start looking at different comorbidities, that we focus as granular as possible. And this is assuming when you started healing autism, you started with special diets and you started doing some of these kind of large step movements. If you've done that successfully, then this is where you can get into comorbidities and very granular things such as tetrahydrobiopterin. Indications of need. Now this is important to understand because not everyone with autism needs to look at their BH4. Many who are deficient in BH4 experience high levels of phenylalanine. Now this is usually tested at birth. So if there are extreme high levels of phenylalanine, it will be picked up at birth. However, our bodies continue to grow and change. So this is not consistently monitored at all times, but this is a pretty easy blood test to have your physician order. Another indication of need is low neurotransmitter levels. And what does that look like? That looks like lack of muscle tone, overproduction of saliva, and it's, it's really more often difficulty swallowing, so you'll see someone drooling, and Many times it's just because swallowing is difficult. And again, that's due to low neurotransmitters because you have to have that coordination from the brain telling all the muscles in the throat to swallow and coordinate and continue to breathe. You know, all those very easy things that many of us take for granted, which when you have low neurotransmitter levels can become quite difficult. Loss of coordination, abnormal movements or spasms, delayed motor development, and another indication of need is failure to thrive. BH4 and autism. So that's what we're all here for, and that's what I like to focus these videos specifically on. Cerebral spinal fluid of those with autism have shown low levels of BH4. 
So what that really means is, all right, in the spinal fluid, you have low levels of BH4 that can translate to central nervous system low levels of BH4, which then impacts directly into the central nervous system neurotransmitters. There have been numerous clinical trials studying BH4, both double-blind placebo-controlled crossover trials, which are like the holy grail, all the way down to open label trials, meaning everybody knows what everyone's getting. I was I was actually quite shocked to learn and read how many clinical trials have been done studying BH4 in autism. So I just pulled out one. Uh, to discuss the results on. It's a more recent one. It's 2013. And in this clinical trial, there were 46 children. Their age was between three and seven years old. All of them had an autism diagnosis and they were randomly assigned to double blind treatment. Their treatment was 20 milligrams per kilogram per day of BH4 or the placebo for 16 weeks. And I pulled out a quote from that study and it said, these results indicate that BH4 offers promise in reducing symptoms of ASD. And the specific symptoms that they found in this clinical trial that BH4 improved were social awareness, autism mannerisms, hyperactivity, and inappropriate speech. So now not every single child with autism needs BH4 or will benefit from BH4. So just think back to the earlier slide with indications of need and that's really how you start the conversation with your physician as to, is this something my child would need? Tetrahydrobiopterin treatment. So there are disorders of tetrahydrobiopterin deficiency, and those are well known. You don't have to have autism to have this type of deficiency. And you, again, you can have autism and not have tetrahydrobiopterin deficiency. But these deficiencies can be classified as transient, mild, or severe. And treatment depends upon severity. Some of the treatment can include neurotransmitter precursors if it's severe enough. There is one FDA-approved medication. It's Biomarin's Cuvan. And it's FDA-approved to reduce blood levels of phenylalanine. Many physicians have used this off-label for those with autism. Tetrahydrobiopterin and diet. You know, I'm a strong advocate for optimizing your child's diet when they're healing autism, but you can't get BH4 from diet. It's really, there's not a good source of BH4 from diet. Our body makes it, and certain bacterial strains make it too. Those with autism are known to have abnormal microbiota, and this is why special diets that focus on rebuilding the gut are so efficient in healing autism symptoms and or comorbidities at the same time. So if your child has an abnormal microbiota, has lots of GI issues, maybe you went for testing for their microbiota, Special diets, and there are a few, special diets that focus on rebuilding the gut specifically are extremely beneficial in many, many efficient ways of healing autism symptoms and or comorbidities. That's just the facts. And here are some references in case you want to do some further reading.